Hello everyone, and welcome back to Create Above and Beyond. So in the last episode, we went ahead and completed our andesite factory, and this thing has been running like a absolute dream. Um, we have 3,000 kinetic mechanisms, 5,000 uh, andesite casings, and 915 andesite alloy. And it is just chugging away here, um, producing a whole lot of stuff for us. I already cleared out the coins once but that is still generating away and i'm really a big fan of it so today i went ahead and updated my to-do list so the first thing we're going to do is actually complete our factory so i want to complete the build and i want a bug fix so look to see if there's any issues or big bottlenecks um so essentially areas of the factory where we're under producing that we can go ahead and fix and um, make sure that everything's keeping up we also want to do some adventuring, so I want to go to the nether and I want to get some mining done. And I'll kind of go into why I want to do that in the next section, which is entering the Brass Age. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to kind of craft all the stuff we need to craft our brass and copper mechanisms. Um, although we won't be getting into too much automation today, but that definitely will be coming up sooner than later. Then the last thing I want to do is finish up our workshop. So I want to get all of our brass crafting stuff done and implemented, as well as kind of build our actual building and clean up um, for the next stages of the pack. Okay, so I was looking at how many connect mechanisms and stuff we got, and I noticed that it really started to slow down, and that's because our lift decided to go down a little too far, it looks like, and also something messed up up here and broke a bunch of belts. So I grabbed some belts to fix that, but I just now realized that our lift got messed up um okay so essentially what happens is if the chunks become unloaded um what can happen is it'll kind of keep going down even though it's hit bedrock so essentially our machine is has been voided so i am going to have to completely rebuild our little lift system and fix all that belt work up there which that that blows. So I got some of the stuff we're going to need to put this back together and I ended up getting stuck down there when I went down. So I just made myself a little emergency staircase to get out. But um, I'm going to show you guys how you can make sure that that does not happen to you. So if you go and press M or in your inventory, you click on FTB chunks, you get this little mini map. Um, and you can click claimed chunks and in here, if you basically click the chunks you want to claim and then you shift click those to force load them. So um, now my entire factory is being force loaded. And even if I run off um, way far away and I'm doing something else or go to the nether, this will stay loaded. Now you do only get 25 chunks you can force load. So the other option is to craft a chunk loader from chicken chunks, which is just an enchanting table, some gold, and an ender pearl. So that's also pretty cheap. Um, so once we run into that 25 chunk um, claim we can essentially do, then we can start crafting ourselves some chunk loaders. But um, this will keep it loaded, and that'll actually be really nice for if we're off in the world doing something. Um, we'll continue to get um, all of our andesite machine stuff. Okay, so... With our contact in, all of our chests and belts done, um, I went ahead and replaced our whole system down there, so we'll just wait for this to activate back down. We'll take a ride down and see if that fixed everything. Hopefully it did. So we should get it down to the bottom. It should actuate out, deposit all of our materials. So it should hit that, go out. There we go. Okay, thank God it's fixed. So we're going to head into the nether in just a little bit, but I've already prepared a few materials for our factory building. We've got the Maya stone, which we're using for the floor, these charred planks, which look really cool when you craft them down into the trap doors and stuff, some gabbro, probably for the walls, some glass for windows, factory blocks, some chisels, and then these hollow steel frames from XK's deco, which um, honestly look really quite cool. I don't know if we'll use it outside the building too much, but it'll look really cool to have some frames inside the building. So without any further ado, let's hop right into a time lapse and we'll see this building completed in just a few seconds.
and here it is, the finished Andesite Factory. I am absolutely in love with how this thing turned out. I think the combination of these factory blocks and the gabbro look really good together. And then with these um, steel half beams from XK's Deco to kind of just kind of bring a little bit more interest and um, detail into the building, I think it all looks really quite nice together. And yeah, I think it'll work pretty well for us here. So inside here, I didn't do too much. Um, one thing you might notice is that there's currently no back wall to the building, um, but that's actually on purpose because eventually what I want to do is I want to build a big train station to actually export the kinetic mechanisms, andesite alloy, and andesite casings to our um, eventual mega factory. So we're going to leave that open because I don't really know what my train station is going to look like quite yet. But So yeah, I think this place is really starting to come together. There's a little bit more work I want to do on the outside. Um, add a bunch of like trees and like vines going up the sides of the building to kind of like bring a little more detail into it And then on the inside um, I eventually want to add some lighting and like big beams going across the ceiling, but I think for now um, We'll call that good for this episode and we will finish the project off in another episode Alrighty, so before we head off into the nether, I do want to just briefly show off um, the next few chapters in our quest book. So the first one is we unlock this uh, chapter 1B, which essentially walks us through creating copper mechanisms fully automated. Now really all we need to do for that is automate cured rubber, which we get from our boreal extractors, which then get us raw rubber, which we can then cook down into cured rubber, and then craft into our sealed mechanisms using our kinetic mechanisms. So that'll be really easy to automate. So then moving on to the brass tier where we're making precision mechanisms, this all looks really quite complicated, but it's actually a lot easier than it looks. Um, essentially, all we need to do is automate quartz and redstone, which in this mod pack, there are some really cool ways to do that. So I think it'll be really good to go to the nether first because what we can do is we can actually get some quartz right away use that to build our first few brass machines and get started with the brass age. So without any further ado, let's go to the nether. Oh, awesome. We spawned into the salt delta. This is perfect. <laughs> it does, may not seem like a perfect biome, but um, I really love building with the basalt bricks and dark stone. So I think this will actually work out pretty nice for us. The only issue being quartz might be a little harder to come by. Um, so we'll have to, oh my god, instantly dying. <laughs> so we'll have to do a little bit of exploring and kind of figure out um, where would be a good place to look for quartz. Okay, so to make sure that doesn't happen, one thing that I saw a few people recommend is to make a grappling hook. Um, and I'm not sure what these upgrades do. Magnet attached, motor enhanced, um... Double hook, rocket, double hook, motor enhanced. I think we'll just use the regular hook and just kind of figure out how it works, but that should make it a little bit easier to get around the nether and hopefully not die too many times. All right, All right. so let's test out this grappling hook. So we throw it and then swing. Oh, okay. That might take a little bit of getting used to, but I think if we're relatively careful about it it shouldn't be too bad oh this is a gnarly biome is that a is that a ruined portal up there or is that just part of this biome i think that's just part of this biome there's a whole bunch of these little um obsidian crying obsidian patches that's super cool oh and look there's another fortress right there awesome let's see if we can't use our slime sling grappling hooks and boots to make it over there Okay. Oh god, there's uh, wither skeletons. I should have expected that. Uh. Oh my god. For a skeleton. Oh my god, two skulls. Immediately. Amazing. This is amazing. Hopefully we don't die. Uh, wow, because I know this cleaver gives a beheading effect, but two skulls on our first two withers. Is that... Let's see if this guy drops a third one. That feels like really high rates. Oh! Oh god, don't lag. Oh god. Oh my god. 
Of course, as soon as I get there, I get a leg spike. Yeah, I know, blame the leg, right? <laughs> you know, I bet he would have dropped a Wither Skull, and that's why he killed us. He was like, oh, I don't think you're ready to fight the Wither, which I definitely am not. Boom. And no skulls, so we must have got really quite lucky with that first uh, two skulls on our first two Wither Skeletons. Oh, and a third one. Okay, I guess they must be pretty common then. Um, with the beheading effect on the cleaver. Still cool, nonetheless. Oh my god! Ah! Oh, I'm gonna hook myself to the ground! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, ah! Oh, ah! Oh. So this isn't another fortress, this is just a spawner. Um, I don't know if that's exciting or disappointing. Um, honestly, a little disappointing. But I guess we will take it. I mean, a piglin spawner is pretty cool. I'm not entirely sure what we'd use it for other than a gold farm. Actually, you know what? That would make a fantastic gold farm. No, this is awesome. Oh, I'm super glad I found this. Um, never mind. I am very happy to find this. Okay, this feels like a good place to test out the grappling hook. Like, I want to, like, swing down along there. Like, I'll, like, flying off. Let's test this out. Oh. Oh, man. That was so disappointing. I thought I'd just go, like, flying off, and I could just, like, <laughs> keep grappling off the ceiling. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll just bounce around. <gasps> Ooh, a bastion. Oh, that's sweet. We will definitely be checking that out. Um, I'm also going to harvest this whole thing. I love these little, like, bone, I guess, skeletons you can find. Such a good supply of bone meal early on. So, is that also a fortress? Ah, it's just another one of those piglin spawners. Is that a ghast in the bastion? Oh, that is so cool. I mean, absolutely terrifying, but that's awesome. Never seen that before. So if you can, can't get this guy. Oh god! Oh no, oh no. That's weird, they're not all mad at me, it's just a few of them. Okay, it might be a lot of them. <laughs> uh, let's get some blocks on my hotbar. Okay, so it's just the brute that's mad? That sucks, because those guys are the worst to deal with. I get to that chest from here. Oh, another right scrap. Amazing. Ooh, we got a Tinker Island over there. I do want to see if we can't get over there. I wonder if I could grappling hook off of here and swing down there. Should we try it? We're gonna try it. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Okay, so I am going to be done with another for just a little bit. I have a ton of dust. I think I went from 17 to 26 um, deaths just in that little short nether adventure I went on. Um, so we're going to hold off on doing too much more nether exploration for now. So let's look at what it's going to take to enter the Brass Age. So now let's start working on a precision mechanism. So we have a deployer line set up over here already, um, which we can basically repurpose from originally as making kinetic mechanisms. We can just repurpose that into making our precision mechanisms. And then for our electron tubes, we need a spout, which we can just fill with some molten iron with our polished rose quartz. That'll be pretty easy to do. And then we also need some rose quartz and we need to sand it to get our polished rose quartz. So both of those are Really quite simple. So I'm over here in my blacksmith building because there's two different materials that we need to be crafting up. Um, the first one is going to be brass itself. So in this mod pack, the way you get brass is by casting it from molten brass, which is done by mixing molten copper and molten zinc. So we already have that set up pretty much done here. All we need to do is put copper and zinc into our smeltery, um, reverse this direction of this mechanical pump, 
And then I have the system that'll already mix it up automatically for us. And then we just reverse the direction of the mechanical pump back into the smeltery, and then we can cast it out into ingots. So that'll be relatively straightforward. And I think we have some here, yeah. So we can just go ahead and take 10 of each because the recipe is one to one. I will put those in. I will turn off my auto um, casting, and then we will grab our wrench. So then as soon as that's smelted up, we will reverse the direction of this. You'll see our zinc goes in. Then after that, our copper will go in and it looks like we're full up here. So it looks like we cannot do 10 at once. Let me figure out how much this basin can hold um, so we know how much we can do. Okay, so it looks like you can hold seven ingots worth of each material. So. We've got seven ingots of zinc and seven ingots of copper, which should mix together to 14 ingots of brass, which we can then cast out here. Easy as that. The next thing we need to do is actually fill um, some molten iron into polished rose quartz to get our electron tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a second pipe coming off here, and we will grab a spout. Um, so that way we can have a little filling station right next to our mixing basin. So let's go craft that up. So to actually get our kid rubber, I'm going to stick with the recipe where you put flowers and you press them in a basin. Um, so all you got to do is craft up some flowers, put them in a basin with some water, and that gets you your rubber. So we're going to stick with that recipe for now, and then in a future episode, we'll craft up those arboreal extractors so we can automate this a bit easier, because this process is a little bit tedious right now. So we got the rubber for our sealed mechanisms and getting the kinetic mechanisms is easy just coming over here and grabbing a stack. That is so nice because those things are so annoying to craft, but then we can do this, get our sealed mechanisms. So we're gonna go ahead and craft up our cop copper casings and we'll just craft up both of these and then put sealed mechanisms around that. And then for our spout, we're just gonna put in our copper machine and a hopper, which gets us our spout. So the next step is to craft a depot because we need to have the spout over the depot and then we'll craft a second drain so we can have a pipe coming out here going into the spout. So also with that, looks like our brass is done mixing up. Um, looks like it did not finish fully. So let's pump this out and see how much we actually got to craft and that way we know how many ingots we can do at once. So six nuggets, eight ingots. That's a odd number. So I'm guessing let's try to do six at a time because it looks like it was able to do just under seven. So um, let me get to reverse the direction until I see brass in the funnel, like right there. And that should mix down. Oh, it looks like it's not going to because it's not a full ingot. Oh, that's too bad. So we had a little bit of waste here, but in the future we know that we can do six brass at a time in our system. So all you got to do to do this is hold the rose quartz in your off hand and then hold sandpaper in your other hand and then hold right click and you kind of sand it down into your polished rose quartz. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and throw some iron into our smeltery, which we're then going to pump over here into our spout. And then I'm just going to go ahead and place down my rose quartz and as soon as that's there, it should start going down into it. There we go. We are making our electron tubes just like that. Sweet. So I think that's all the steps we need to make our precision mechanisms. We just need to craft a screwdriver, which is just some blue dye and some iron. Easy as that. So we'll do that and we'll get our first brass machine done. All right. So we'll clear off all the old junk from our little deployer line here. Just toss it over there, we don't need that anymore. And then we will put our kinetic mechanisms in first, and then we will put in our electron tubes, split into the next two drawers. And then the last step is to craft up that screwdriver. So let's see if we have the die for it. We do, so two blue die, and it was three iron. Oh man, we are almost out of iron. I think in the next episode, what we're gonna do is craft up an iron generator. I think it is far overdue. <laughs> so we'll just try to get that done in the next episode. And there we go. 
We are crafting our precision mechanisms. Awesome. So we got our eight precision mechanisms. We will grab a log. We will combine that with our brass sheet, get our brass casing, go around there. And we have now officially entered the brass age. How cool is that? So the Brass Age opens up a whole lot of stuff for us. It opens up mechanical crafters so we can auto craft stuff. It opens up trade it opens up trade stations so we don't have to keep buying them. It opens up item terminals, which is from pretty pipes. I'm not entirely sure what that does. This allows viewing and requesting of items in a pipe network. Oh, so that might help making a storage system. It adds a flare lantern, which places invisible lights. And it also adds a pipe pressurizer from pretty pipes. But then what I'm really excited about is brass tunnels, brass funnels, stockpile switches, and mechanical arms. That will make setting up our factories in the future a whole lot easier and make everything just work a lot nicer. And then it also gets us into rotational speed controllers and furnace engines, um, which means we don't have to keep spamming water wheels in every single building we make. So as far as buddy cards go today, we've got 11 base sets and three nether sets we got from the nether. So Let's go ahead and open up our nether ones first because these are brand new to us and we'll see what we get. Looks like we got some pretty cool stuff. Um, looks like we don't have any super rares, but we do have some rares. And then we'll also just open up the rest of these base sets and see if we can't fill out our last few shinies. Alrighty, so sadly we got no more shiny of our base set and this thing is going to be quite a pain to fill out because look how many base set cards we have of extras. So. We'll keep cranking away at that till we can finish that off, but we did end up getting quite a few nether cards, and um, that makes me pretty happy because that means we should be able to upgrade our armor. So we're currently at 8%. Let's see what we we'll get up to 11. Nice. So it looks like it's not too much better, but you know what? Any little bit is going to help. So we ended up not actually finishing up our to-do list for the day. Um, we just about completed the factory. Um, as far as bug fixing goes, I'm still watching it, making sure it's keeping up. It seems to be pretty good so far. One thing that you guys mentioned that I'll definitely have to do is that in the market, you can buy a enchanted unbreakable saw with five gold. So I'll definitely be doing that. Um, I definitely have the gold. Oh yeah, I easily have enough money. So <laughs> I'll definitely be buying that saw um, so we don't have to keep replacing those. And then also our tree farm, I don't know if it's keeping up on saplings, so we'll have to be watching that. We did go to the nether, but we did not manage to find any blazes, but I think that's fine. I think we can save that for another day, um, and we didn't have time for a mining trip. I think instead of mining in the next episode, what we're going to focus on is crafting up some automatic iron. Now we did actually manage to get into the brass age, but we did not manage to get our workshop done. So as far as copper machines go, we did get our spout going, so that's pretty good. And then as far as brass machines go, the only thing I want is like a big auto crafting wall. And I think that's pretty much it for our brass actually like functional machines. And then I do want to add some other machines to our workshop. I want to add a mixer, I want to add a press, all that good stuff. And then we need to build the building, which um, this thing, the giant mega andesite factory, that took a while. So I did not quite have enough time to build our workshop building today, but in the next episode, we'll definitely see that come together. So sadly, I think that's all the time we have for this episode. We are really starting to move up in the world, and I'm really excited to start building some more mega factories like this one. This is a super fun project, and I can't wait to start automating all of this brass and copper machinery. If you guys enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.